Hello, I am here today with my friend Larry. Larry and I have known each other for about 25 years. We used to be next door neighbors. Larry shows up and he's got this Toyota Land Cruiser and he's done all of the modifications for boondocking and camping himself. I want Larry to tell you about his setup and kind of show you around what he's done to modify this vehicle. Okay. Yep, it's a 99 uh, Toyota Land Cruiser. It's got about 320,000 miles on it. And uh, I was looking for a vehicle that would get me out in the woods. I like to do a lot of hiking, backpacking, camping, and I do a lot of solo adventures. So one, it's a good four wheel drive and I've done bumpers and winches and things like that. But I've done a lot of work to outfit it as basically a one man RV, a camper that will go pretty much anywhere and I've taken it to some pretty crazy places. Yeah, Larry will go places like 80 miles from the nearest gas station, like places like that where the roads are just rocky and bumpy and the vehicles like moving like this. Like, this is your everyday vehicle. Unfortunately, yes. So a lot <laughs> of the stuff I did to the vehicle was so I could take the trips, but then I could come home and take everything out of it real quick and easy and use it for dogs and kids. Yeah. Got it. So I am super impressed with the quality of woodwork and the way that you've built this out, and I'm very excited to show you. The back is a lot of good storage. I've got limited range on the vehicle. It only gets like 12 miles a gallon. So I always carry like 10 gallons of gas and then five gallons of water. But I've taken a trip where all of this was gas and I used everything in the truck and all I had left was five gallons left at the end. So wow. we were in the middle of Utah and it was a long way. This is pretty interesting. You were sharing that with me, your trash -aroo. Yeah, a lot of the, most of the four wheel drive people, you know, have these or know of them, but you know, maybe some of the van people don't, but it's, uh, it's a trash can because the worst thing is, you know, to be out four or five days in the desert and have trash in your car and have to smell it. So it all stays in here. I can carry spare oil and windshield washer fluid, stuff like that. But there's a pocket right here. All of the wrenches to open everything else, uh, open up the gas and the water. And I also keep a siphon with me to put the gas in the uh, tank. And that trash was fascinating to me because I've heard other like van lifers, like what do you do with the trash? Like they end up yeah. having bags of trash piled in their shower because they don't know what to do with it. Uh, open it up and let's see what you've got inside. Even those little swivel racks are cool. Yeah. Now, did you have those custom built for this or? Yeah, there's a guy in Colorado, uh, Slee Off-Road, S-L-E-E. -E. He made the front and back bumper and his workmanship is, is just great. He does a lot of stuff for Toyotas. Very cool. This is the setup. You know, I pretty much leave it like this a lot now, but this is this is how it's set up to go camping. It's got, uh, you know, I've got a refrigerator. Uh, refrigerator was a big deal for me because going back into town and filling up for ice and everything was a problem. And this, I can pack this up in the first part of the week and then I can go all week with it. So. Yeah, I, I love my car fridge in my van too. It's yeah. one of my favorite things in the van. Yeah. So. I okay. love how you have it on the slide out. Yeah because uh, I wanted to use the space above it. So, you know, I've been a closet architect, I've been in the construction business, I've been a carpenter, and when you get to a space this small, inches count. You can't afford to give up inches. I agree. Like, just the little space under here, don't, don't look at the beer caps. <laughs> <laughs> There's my two favorite beers right there. But, you know, use everything here. Like, uh, these holds, you know, well, I won't. That actually is designed for a Jack Daniels fifth because it's square. <laughs> this will hold whatever. And, you know, everything is a, is a place, you know, a storage place. Because, you know, here's a bottle opener right there. And then uh, this drawer here holds my stove, you know, baby wipes. Uh, these are the lights that I hang on for my awning. And then this, this space here, I, I love bungees. I do everything with bungees. But that holds chips, bread, all my food for the week, you know. I'll end up with all kind of stuff up there. But 
this and worked it's, out really well. It's interesting to me. It's like you put the holes in here just for less weight. Yes, because I, I already knew I was adding the bumpers to the truck and things like that. And you can really get these overloaded so bad that the, the truck doesn't do well, especially it doesn't do well off-road. So Yeah, that was an issue with my van with yeah, the weight. If you look down here, everywhere that I don't think I need the structure to hold the weight, I cut it out. And uh, so you'll see that all over where I've, I've taken weight out of it. This is what I call my fridge tower in my kitchen right here. Okay. And this is the bed. They're two separate pieces. I've got three little bolts right here that I unscrew those and these come out as separate pieces. I can have everything out of here in probably 15 minutes. More bungees. This lifts up if I need to, but I try, I generally on a day-to-day -day basis, I wouldn't need to do that because everything that I camp with is in these storage boxes and I keep three under here. Also when I get back to the house I can unload the truck in just minutes because these just go back in the house and I'm done. These slide under there that's most of the storage but over on the side over here I can store all my tools, my toe straps, everything that I don't anticipate needing uh, can go over there. And so the bed space is here and I'll take you around to the side. I leave one seat in the truck and I use it to support the bed platform. The other seat that goes here comes out and uh, because that, that's five minutes to take that out. Mm -hmm. But the neat thing about this, that's held with a bungee. I can flip that back onto the other one, put this seat up, and I can drive around with it most of the time. And that's probably how I drive it. That's awesome. Will you open the other door and show me how that flips yep. up? Yep. And then here's more bungees. I use it to I hold my backpacks, my coats, things like that. This is the other side of the fridge tower. And then there's storage. I use every inch I can. So here's storage on the side of it. You know, here's a camp toilet. Here's, uh, oh, here's my spare bedroom as a backpacking tent. <laughs> so if anybody's riding in the passenger seat, they're sleeping in that. I like it. All right, so I'll move that for Okay, you. so that part of the bed literally just flips up and slides on that back side. Yeah, and then I can use this as and then a normal you can car race. yeah that's awesome awesome very very smart and then come back and look here it's even designed so that this is the same shape as the one below it and it's notched around here so that it can just stay back there i can throw bags and things on there now and it's no big deal and it's uh this has power to it i've got an inverter up here and a fan and I'll show you the electrical. There's an electrical panel on here. Got a little cover plate in here with some magnets. And if you look in here, you'll see the electrical that runs the, uh, runs the fridge and the fan and everything else. And that's just a quick disconnect uh, right here under the tent right there. Mm -hmm. It's just a plug in the wall. So all I've got to do is untwist it, take it out, and all the electrical is separate because I installed a separate battery system in the truck so that once I park, I never use my start battery for anything. All my lights, my USB outlets, everything is running off of that other battery. And then that charges when I drive down the road. This is my camp table and I'll show you this. It's got a notch right here. It just slides in here. Two little, and then that's the table. That is so handy. So when I'm camping by myself, I pretty much just live right here. Uh, most of the time, I don't even set up a chair. You know, uh, there's not too many vehicles left that still have real tailgates, and I, I love a tailgate. And then I can cook up here, uh, you know, put your drink, your phone, whatever. It just You can be camping in like five minutes. Unless I put out the awning and everything else, there's nothing to set up. I just stop driving and then pull over. So. Yeah, it's super handy, and I'm so impressed, Larry, with the quality of your work. Do you want to tell them what this hole is for? Oh, so uh, this holds a backpacking stove. If you take the propane cylinder and put it up through here, the stove screws on the top. That way, the wind doesn't knock it over, all that. One of the things I try to do is be efficient with the weight and how you build it, because most people build things far too heavy than what they need. This plywood is a little bit less than a half inch and there's no two by fours and things in here. It's just very lightweight. I think a lot of people when they're looking at how they build out their van or something, 
don't overbuild it because you can really bog your vehicle down with the way. So. Yeah, I think I did that a little bit with the van. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Can you show me under the hood, like your yeah. extra yeah. battery system sure. under there? And I have all the light I need to see after dark. I see that. <laughs> in fact, I just put these in. So the standard battery is over here. But then I've run some cable over to this side. There's a battery disconnect here that runs a, uh, there's an electric relay off. A lot of these marine supply places sell a relay that it, when it feels the battery charging, it will connect two batteries. Here's my second battery back here. And you put this in yourself, right? Yeah, Slee made the bracket, but I wired everything up. Like here's a big breaker for it and everything. So there's a whole separate electrical system in the truck. And this is actually an air compressor to air up my tires and everything. Separate battery. And the nice thing is when the truck, when you turn the truck off at the camp, the relay separates the batteries. So you're never worried about running down your battery and not being able to you know start your truck in the morning so smart now the other thing that and I've used this one time I can turn this switch here and manually combine the batteries I can put it on one and two and I can jump start myself <laughs> I did that two years ago I got in there and my truck didn't start the next morning it was like a, a sense of panic but then I said oh no and then I flipped the switch jump started myself went to town got a new battery in Montrose Colorado so this truck has really been kind of over designed because I'm always by myself and I just don't want to get stuck. Yeah. I, I mean, it would do far tougher roads than I probably do. I finally broke down and got a, a Rhino Rack tray system because I was needing to put some more things on here, but I mainly did it to hold the awning. The awning and the refrigerator are probably two of my favorite things. The awning swings all the way back around and will cover where I sit at the tailgate. If there's rain or whatever, you can get out it's kind of hard to just sit in the truck, you know, that right. gets a little boring. Put the awning out, I've got some lights that string up under there, plug into a USB port and it's good. Anything else on the roof rack? I made a couple brackets up there for a, that will hold uh, shovels and max track. The next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to get one of those small rooftop boxes that you see people put skis in and uh -huh. stuff. If you go with other people, they're going to have all their gear, sleeping bags, stuff like that. It would be nice to carry more people because I can expand this real easy by using the seats that are in here, but then putting tents and things on the roof. So. Yep, yep, got it. Because I never know who wants to go or who I'm meeting up with. So, Larry, was that um, was the vent pipe up here part of the original vehicle or is that a modification that you yeah, did? A, a lot of people put a snorkel on a truck because they think they're going through deep rivers and stuff, but that's not why I did it, even though I live in Houston, the roads flood all the time. The air intake is right behind the wheel, behind a, this, this plastic fender liner. Uh -huh. So I'd done a lot of desert stuff and I was having a lot of problems with my air filter clogging up. So instead of sucking all the dust from right behind the wheel it pulls it from up here and it's just it's made a big difference on the dust. Larry thank you for showing me your vehicle I'm super impressed with your woodworking and the amount of thought that you've put into this and actually I'm gonna talk Larry into working on my van a little bit I'm thinking some slide outs for the drawers maybe some modifications around the sink maybe even a little drawer so I'm hoping I can talk you into helping me with a few things with my van. Oh yeah. Thank you for being here. Thank you for watching. Remember to hit that thumbs up, like, and subscribe, and you keep watching and I'll keep posting content. So Larry, thank you so, 